Hey guys, it's Seal HD, and welcome to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. This is personally my favorite generation, mainly because I grew up playing it. This game also has some pretty cool glitches like item duplication, putting moves onto a ditto, out of bounds, game crashes, and more coming up. So in this episode of Game Breakers, we're going to take a look at glitches within Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. I want to start this off with one of the best glitches this game has to offer. Sadly, it's exclusive to the Japanese versions, but it's still pretty cool. There's a way to get a similar effect in all versions of the game, but I'll get to that in a second. When you enter the Pokemon League, you'll face off against the Elite Four. In the first of the four, Aaron's Room, you'll be able to surf on the door and get out of bounds. It's not like normal water tiles where you can press A and the text will pop up. You have to go into the Pokemon menu and select Surf from the Pokemon that knows the move. You'll begin surfing on that tile and pressing down again will cause you to hop off and you're now completely out of bounds in what's known as the Void. Nothing is loaded out here so it's kind of hard to accomplish anything on your own, but thanks to some people researching this glitch, we can do a lot of useful things. First, let's catch Darkrai. We're going to be using the Poketch Step Counter app, so switch to that on your bottom screen. As soon as you hop off and out of bounds, clear the step counter and go 146 steps to the right. Once you get there, clear the counter and head 254 steps down. From here, save and reset the game. When you load up your save, you'll be on New Moon Island with some pretty interesting graphics. The ocean and ground are pretty fuzzy and there's some random cave looking tiles just on the ground. Luckily this doesn't get in your way as you're able to walk right in and catch Darkrai. Once that's done just walk out and speak to the sailor who will take you back to mainland. But we're not done yet, you can catch Shaman as well. Get out of bounds again and clear your step counter. Travel 903 steps right, clear and then 363 down. From here save and reset. When you load back in you'll have to run up a bunch until you reach an all white island with Shaman. Upon catching him, fly back to the Pokemon League. Using this glitch we can do one final useful thing. We can skip the entire Elite Four and the battle with Cynthia. Hop out of bounds and run alongside the room until you're in front of the door leading to the next one. Clear the step counter and run up 64 steps. Now save and reset. Load the save and take one step in any direction. The cutscene after you beat Cynthia will start to play. So by doing this out of bounds glitch you can technically beat the game with a single level 1 Pokemon that can learn Surf. If you own any other version of the game and still want to catch Darkrai and Shaman, beat the Elite Four and all that, I made a video on tweaking and the Void glitch already if you want to check that out. Just a warning, the process takes a lot longer, like hours long. Next is another Japanese exclusive that allows you to duplicate items. For this you're going to need a Ditto and a Pokemon with a move that can steal items. For me, I use Mighty Anna because it learns Thief at level 57. Once you have those two Pokemon in your first two slots, have Ditto hold an item that you want and make the other so it isn't holding anything. I had Ditto hold a Master Ball so we could have two afterwards. Enter a doubles battle. It doesn't really matter who, just make sure you can defeat them without losing a single Pokemon. Once in the battle, have Ditto use Transform on any other Pokemon and since Mighty Anna outspeeds Ditto, we're going to have to blow one turn because if he uses Thief now, it won't work. Once Ditto transforms, you can use Thief and take the held item. Now simply win the fight without losing either Pokemon. When the battle concludes, check your party. You'll now see that Ditto and Mighty Anna are both holding items, in this case the Master Ball. Take the item from Mighty Anna and boom, you're already set up for another item dupe if you want even more. Okay, so from here the rest of the glitches can be done in all versions of the game. Sticking with Ditto though, we can actually give him moves other than just Transform. All we need is Ditto and a Pokemon that knows the move Rage. I use Salamence. We're going to be copying that Pokemon's move, so make sure the other three moves are ones that you want. Now we'll get into another doubles battle. Have Ditto transform into your Pokemon. All your moves will be at 5 PP, so use Rage all 5 times. I had it hit my Salamence because the other team's Pokemon would have died immediately due to the level difference. After using all 5 Rages, kill your other Pokemon if it isn't dead already. I luckily killed them on my last one. Now just swap into another Pokemon if you have one, and if you don't it doesn't matter, just win the battle. Now go check out your Ditto's moves. Mine now has Earthquake, Flamethrower, Fly, and Rage which is awesome. I'm now able to fly around on Ditto as long as you have the badge to use it outside of battle. You can put a whole bunch of moves on Ditto using this method as long as the other Pokemon has Rage. When breeding Pokemon you'll receive eggs which can take a decent amount of time to hatch. So if you want a specific ability or nature this glitch can help out a bunch with time. Place an egg in the first slot of a box and a Pokemon in an adjacent one. In the bottom left corner you can see a box that contains information on the Pokemon you have your cursor on. Just as it switches between information, press the L or R button depending on where the egg is. The box in the bottom left will display info about the Pokemon inside the egg very briefly before correcting itself and going away. I breeded two Gibbles, so when I checked my egg I saw that it was Dragon Ground, Hardy Nature, and had the ability Sand Vial. This trick can be very useful for breeders or if you just forgot what Pokemon was in the egg. While in the Great Marsh, have Arceus in your first slot holding a plate and then get into a battle. 
Before you throw Arceus out, the game crashes making a very high pitched ringing noise. In any Pokemart, if you have the Pokemon you sweet sent, when you go to buy something, the menu text will be completely gone. You can still see the icon for each and purchase things which is kind of strange. You can fix this by leaving the store or choosing sell instead. Using the item Honey will have the same effect. In the Jubilife TV building, there's a person who wants you to dress up your Pokemon. When he asks if you should explain how to do it, say no and then repeatedly press left, down, or right on the D-pad. As the screen fades out, you'll see the character turn that way. After picking your Pokemon, the hike will move in that direction to try and get out of your way, but since you're facing the side, you'll walk right into him instead of the door. The same thing occurs when you leave the minigame. You'll walk right through him on the way out. What's interesting is when you face down before the screen fades and picking your Pokemon, the hiker will say the dialogue like you're about to enter but he never moves out of the way and the conversation ends so you don't get to enter. On the right side of Route 214, there's an area named the Spring Path. Entering it will cause the music to change. If you view the TMs and HMs in your bag then close out and run back into the route, the music will never come back in. You can only hear sound effects if you bumping into things and talking to people. To my knowledge, this is the only place that you can do this glitch. My guess is because the spring path only opens up when you have the national pokedex, it may affect the triggers for the music changes, but I'm really not sure. In the post game on route 225, bring an extremely low level dark type pokemon that knows the move facade. Fight this trainer who has a slow poke. Now just repeatedly spam the move facade. This causes the pokemon sprite to move up one pixel each time they use it. And since our level 2 umbreon is a dark type, this slow poke can't hit us with any of his moves. And since we're so underleveled, we won't kill him. So we can simply spam facade all we want. I used max elixir so I wouldn't run out of PP just to see how far Umbreon could go up. I wanted to get him all the way off the screen, but sadly Slowpoke ran out of PP on all of his moves, struggled, and killed me. So this might be the highest you can get with this glitch because once Slowpoke runs out of PP, it's over. When in a battle, if you use U-Turn and switch to a Pokemon that has a choice item on it, like Choice Scarf, you won't be able to attack because the game locked U-Turn into the choice item. Unless you have U-Turn on that Pokemon that you switch into, any attack won't be allowed. This glitch can be pretty annoying if you actually need to use an attack on that Pokemon, but now you're pretty much forced to swap out and take damage. This next one's completely pointless, but still kind of funny. In Eternal Forest, when you're escorting Cheryl, there's an NPC here that can walk right through them. The person cannot run through you, but I guess they never programmed him to ignore Cheryl, so he just walks right through. So that's going to do it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, drop a like and subscribe. Like I said earlier, I've covered the void glitch in a separate video along with black and white and red and blue glitches, so if you want even more Pokemon glitches, definitely check those out. I apologize for the delay of this video. My hard drive started acting up and caused a bunch of the footage to be corrupted, so I had to go back and re-record some stuff. But anyway, for now, I'm gonna get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!